Welcome to Business Statistical Analysis video number 23. And in this video, we got to talk about discrete probability distributions, terms, and definitions. Hey, we're in chapter five. We're going to talk about discrete probability distributions. And we already know a little bit about probability distributions, not only from chapter three when we did frequency distributions and relative frequency distributions, but also from last chapter. Now we have to define some terms before we can jump over to Excel and, and create some probability distributions. Hey, our first term is going to be random variable x. Hey, this is going to be a numerical value resulting from a random experiment that by chance can assume different values. Another way to describe a random variable, a numerical description of the outcome of a random experiment. Now, it's a description because sometimes we can have customers coming into a store, so we're counting 0, 1, 2, 3. Hey, that's easy to tell it's a number, right? Weight of a cereal box, that's another one. It's easy to tell that this is a number. This is weighing ounces. But what about this one? The experiment's going to determine defect or not defect. How in the world are we going to get a numerical description for that? Well, we're going to assign it 1 or 0. Now we're going to have two types of random variables. Let's scroll down. We've got to talk about being polite. You have to be very discreet. No, no, discrete random variable, that's x. That just means we're usually counting. Discrete numbers have gaps. So 1, 2, 3, or 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. This is in contrast to a continuous random variable. This is weighing boxes of cereal or timing things. So it depends on the measurement instrument. The way you think of it is here's 1, here's 2. There's lots of numbers in between there. It depends on the instrument you're using to measure. All right, so discrete may assume either a finite number of values like 0, 1, 2, 3, or an infinite sequence of numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You can think about an infinite sequence like how many people are showing up to your store in five minutes. Well, there could be zero, there could be one, there could be two, there could be three. It could go on forever. Well, theoretically forever, right? So we're going to leave it as an open-ended infinite sequence of numbers. Examples of discrete customers coming into the store. We could have zero, one, two, three. Scores for a dancer, right? Zero, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Even though this doesn't seem like counting, it is. We're 0 0.1, 0 0.2, et cetera, all the way up to 10. We could also have product quality like defect equals 1, not defect equals 0. Now, the discrete random variables, what we're going to be talking about in this chapter. Chapter 6, our next chapter, we'll talk about continuous random variable. May assume any numerical value in an interval or collection of intervals. Depends on the measurement instrument. Weight of cereal. Time between customers in line at Disneyland. Percentage score on a test or even money. Now, money seem, may seem like it's discrete, right? One penny, two penny, three penny. But there's lots of situations where money depends on the measuring instrument or you have fractions of pennies. Now, what we're really after is probability distributions. And a probability distribution is just a description or presentation of how the probabilities are distributed over the values of the random variable. If you think back to last chapter, we did frequency distributions with relative frequency and cross tabulation. There, we just had all of the percentage for some categories, and they had to add up to 1. So that's a description of the probabilities distributed, in our case, in this chapter over a random discrete variable. Now, discrete probability distribution, the same thing. A description presentation of how the probabilities are distributed over values of a discrete random variable. Now, we can have three different ways that we can describe or present. Here's our table method. Last chapter, we did this. We had an experiment, flip a coin three times, and the number of tails was defined as a success. We could get 0, 1, 2, or 3. 
we calculated all the sample points and then calculated the probabilities. This is the table form. Now from this table, we can do things like, what's the probability of getting two tails and three flips? 0 0.375. How about the probability of two or more? You just add those two together, so it's 0.5. We can also present or describe all of the probabilities across the values of our discrete random variable with a chart, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, and then the height represent the probabilities. We can also use a function like, and that's our binomial function. Looks big and scary, but we will see that it kind of makes sense in terms of calculating a particular event later in this class. Now, that right there is awesome because you can't always, like this example here, list all the sample points. So if we flip a coin 10 times, I don't want to list all of those sample points. That's where this formula will come in and be really quite easy in compared to creating this by hand with all the sample points. Now that's a discrete probability function, and the discrete probability function will be defined as, hey, f of x, that's what this author uses. I use p of x. I like p because it means probability. Both of these are perfectly all right in and almost all of my handouts and Excel workbooks, I'll list them both, but I like p of x to describe discrete probability function. Hey, this p of x or f of x, that will provide the probability for each value of the discrete random variable. So here's one of the values. Here's the other value. Each one of these probabilities can be calculated with this function right here. Now we want to scroll down and talk about the methods of assigning probability. Hey, well, just as you might suspect, last chapter we learned about classical, relative, and subjective. Well, you can use those three methods for creating discrete probability distributions. Hey, classical, if we had an experiment, roll one die, these are our only outcomes. This would be our random variable x. We'd list it here and assign probabilities. Now notice, this is one of those cases where they're all the same. This actually has a special name, discrete uniform probability distribution. And the probability function is 1 divided by the number of values that the random variable may assume. Now, relative method or relative frequency method, we go from past data. And we'll actually create this frequency distribution from scratch later in this video. But our experiment is count the number of restaurant banquet rooms used in one day. There are four banquet rooms, so the possibilities are 0 all the way to 4. We did a sample over the last year and got these frequencies. We calculated these relative frequencies. They add up to 1. Each individual one is greater than 0, so we have our relative frequency distribution. We can use these as probabilities. Now, relative frequency method when large data sets are used is called an empirical discrete probability distribution. Now we can use this to make predictions. The probability that we're going to use two rooms, 0.41. Probability that we're going to use two or three, 69%. The final method, subjective, we have little past data and we do not have equally likely outcomes. In this example, a sales example, usually there's lots of data. We can look at past records to calculate number of compressors sold at a compressor shop. These are big developers compressors. So sometimes they don't sell any. Sometimes they sell one. Usually they sell two or three. We list our probabilities. But since we don't have past data, the sales manager just estimated from memory did not analyze past data. In essence, this was their first year of operation, so there was no past data. People do do subjective, but notice it meets our requirements, adds up to 1 each individual probability greater than or equal to 0. Now, the big advantage of frequency distributions, as we've already mentioned uh, in this video and last chapter, once you have a frequency distribution, it's easy to calculate probability of a variety of events. So we could ask the probability that number of compressors sold is less than or equal to 1. We simply look up here, add 0 and 1. Probability that we sell two or more compressors, we look up here, add 2, 3, and 4 or more. 
Now the steps for building a discrete probability distribution, we've done some of these already. However, we will have a step one here. We'll define our random variable, build the frequency distribution, calculate the relative frequencies, check the requirements, create a column chart. If desired, we'll do that a number of times to visually portray our distribution. Remember, with uh, discrete in this chapter, we will not have our columns touching. And then use it, make predictions. Now, we have, I have some examples here in our handwritten notes. In this example, last chapter and our earlier example in this video, we did success equals get a tail. Here it is, success equals get a head. So we've defined that as our experiment. But we list our sample points, calculate our probabilities, and this is our table we're going to use to make predictions. There's our column. Our next example, hey, we're going to create a discrete probability distribution. And you can read through this. This is our Italian restaurant with banquet rooms. But I want to scroll down here because we're going to talk about two important formulas. And then we'll go over and calculate these in Excel. Expected value, that's the term they often use when we have frequency distribution. It just means we need to calculate the mean. They will use uh, mu, which is a Greek letter to represent this. I'll tend to use expected value. But notice x times probability, you do all of them and then add them up. We actually did this as a weighted average back in chapter 3. We could think of this as the mean, the weighted mean, the expected value, long run average. And guess what? The value does not have to be a value that the random variable can assume. So for this example right here, here's our number of banquet rooms on any particular day. Well, the actual x value is 0 to 4. We got an average of 2.18. That's perfectly all right. That is our average. But remember, it's just a weighted mean. Super easy. We'll use some product function. Hey, and standard deviation for a discrete random variable, guess what? We're going to take x. That's our random variable. So in this example, it's 0 to 4. Each one of those subtract our expected value, square it, and we'll multiply it times the probability, then take the square root. That'll give us the standard deviation. Just like our mean gives us central location or one value that represents all the values, standard deviation will give us variation or dispersion. It will tell us how fairly our mean represents our data points. Now, here's the longhand method. And we'll see how to calculate this. But in the next video, in this video, we just talked about terms and definitions for discrete probability distribution. But next video, we'll get to have fun in Excel calculating standard deviation, expected value. And before we do any of that, we'll get to create our discrete probability distributions. All right, we'll see you next video.